Hello everyone, I'm excited to give this talk on novel targets and treatment response biomarkers for atopic dermatitis. So my disclosures, I'm very proud to be part of this therapeutic development. However, I don't have any financial gain from any atopic dermatitis drug. And as we all know, atopic dermatitis is a complex disease that involves more than one cytokine pathway. While we know that it is focused on the Th2 pathway with important involvement of IL-4, IL-13, and other cytokines from the Th2 pathway such as IL-31, IL-5, and others, there is also important inv involvement of cytokines such as IL-22 and some contribution of Th1 cytokines and Th17 cytokines. And this is important to remember because for some patients it may be the targeting just one cytokine pathway may not be enough to control the disease 100% of the times. So how are we testing the contribution of the different cytokines to atopic dermatitis? We are doing it through clinical trials with targeted treatments in atopic dermatitis patients. And of course, this is best when coupled with biomarkers. And let's review some of the novel targets uh, that also include biomarkers. So OX40 targeting is done now by two drugs, GBR830 and KHK4083, and they both target OX40 that is important for Th2, but also for T regulatory cells. And there is new data suggesting that maybe targeting this axis may achieve tolerance and potentially disease modification. There are two small studies done that were reported, and we are now waiting for additional larger studies that are now being conducted. So one study from Glenmark with GBR830 showed putting biomarkers as primary endpoint showed response at the primary endpoint through biomarkers. And another small study done by Kiowa from Japan with KHK4083 that was not a placebo controlled study in which 22 patients with severe atopic dermatitis got three doses of the drug at baseline week two and week four. And then it took some time, but there was 80% reduction in easy scores at week 22, as well as reduction from baseline in TARC that followed the same trends also at week 22. So I think that has promise and let's wait for the uh, studies that I'm sure will be reported very soon. Now, uh, another exciting target, IL-22, Fezakizumab targets IL-22. And this is my own study. It's an NIH uh, study that uh, started from the fact that there was a drug on the shelf of Pfizer Fezakizumab, anti-IL-22, and after they failed two indications in psoriasis and RA, they were not interested to develop it in atopic dermatitis. And work from our group and others showed that IL-22 may be important in atopic dermatitis since it's potentially related to several disease features, the hyperplasia and the barrier abnormalities of atopic dermatitis, and we postulated that maybe anti-IL-22 treatment will be actually alleviating some of the disease features in patients with atopic dermatitis. We did a small study, a monotherapy study, only 60 patients, 2 to 1 to placebo, and unfortunately we put the endpoint at week 8, and as you can see here, maybe it would have been beneficial to put it later. Because at week eight, there was significance, but at other weeks, we did not find significance, including at week 12, comparing drug and placebo. However, when we did a model that included treatment and severity and time, we saw that there was significance at every single week, as you can see. And then we separated the patients to severe patients and moderate patients, and then we actually achieved significance compared to placebo at every single week. And we asked ourselves, why is that? And we had a crazy idea to separate the patients by IL-22 median expression at baseline. And when we did that, and here you are looking at a heat map of gene expression using microarrays, and here you see red is up regulation, blue is down regulation. You can clearly see that lesional phenotype at week zero is a, a basically down-regulated to the non-lesional level. 
as you can see in the patients with the high IL-22, whereas that's not happening in the placebo arm, red stays red there. But look at that, the low baseline IL-22, we actually unfortunately made the patients worse blue is turning into red. So here we improved only the patients with the high baseline IL-22. And I think this is the first example of personalized medicine that we have in atopic dermatitis, but perhaps even beyond atopic dermatitis in medicine in general, or, or dermatology in general, sorry. Um, and uh, here is an example of a patient. You see these very lichenified lesions before treatment and three months after treatment, this result. And we all know that it's so difficult to resolve these uh, lesions in African-American patients. Now, Rizankizumab, there is a study that is being conducted with Rizankizumab for um, Atopic dermatitis, we know it's a highly successful treatment in psoriasis. Rizankizumab is targeting P19, IL-23 P19, that is the master regulator of TH22 and TH17. So this may also help atopic dermatitis patients. We are very excited and waiting for this study. This is the design of the study. It's one to one to one, two doses of Rizankizumab as compared to placebo and we are waiting for the results of this study. Now, we need to remember biomarkers are really important in atopic dermatitis because we have multiple disease phenotype clinically, and we also show that these disease phenotypes also have differences in their immune polarization and also barrier abnormalities. So stratification of biomarkers specific to these phenotypes may be very important in order for us to develop a personalized treatment approach for atopic dermatitis. So let's see how we can develop, and I don't have much time to talk about biomarkers here, but I want to focus on minimally invasive biomarkers. So I will start actually with a study that we did actually involving biopsies, but necessitating so tiny material, only 10 um, uh, nanograms, that can be achieved through one millimeter punch biopsy. And here we looked at proteomics using Olink proteomics, and we found that uh, the proteomic atopic dermatitis skin profile showed increases in inflammatory proteins that we know many of them from past studies in, in larger biopsies, but also proaterogenic proteins. And among these, we found multiple proteins that are very familiar to us, such as PA3, that is a biomarker of atopic dermatitis, CCL2, CCL17, that's TARC, CCL13, and many others. Now, importantly, we found when we compare the profile in the skin of these proteins to the same profile in, in these patients of their blood profile, we found that most of the um, um, uh, biomarkers are focused on the skin uh, side, not on the blood side. So that tells us that the skin is the likely source for the inflammatory atopic dermatitis that we see in blood. And that's why we need non-invasive or minimally invasive techniques to sample the skin. So expression levels were much higher in skin than in blood, suggesting a potential skin source for the inflammatory and cardiovascular risk proteins that we are finding in blood. And the proteomic profile may be very valuable for future studies because we need so little material. Now, another exciting approach is tape stripping as a minimally invasive approach to sample the skin. So tape stripping, I don't have time to go into it, but it was first introduced as a method to detect melanoma. And it's important to remember that it samples the epidermis up to the middle of the stratum granulosum. We recently published several papers in both infants and in a older atopic dermatitis patients, showing that we could recapitulate the profile of the disease using tape strips. So in this uh, study, um, uh, I'm showing here that many biomarkers of disease such as CCL17, again, TARC, the S100s and many others were uh, correctly recapitulated as being upregulated in infant skin as compared to healthy skin. So this is an exciting way to look at longitudinal studies and also clinical trials in infants, children, and also adults when we cannot sample the skin using um, biopsies 
uh, in multiple time points. Another study that we did comparing atopic dermatitis and psoriasis, we were really excited because we found a single biomarker, INOS, differentiating these diseases with 100% certainty, and we recapitulated the profiles of atopic dermatitis and psoriasis respectively, finding multiple differentially expressed genes in both diseases, very similar to what we see in skin biopsies. And recently, we also published a paper uh, of a treatment response biomarkers to dupilumab in a real-life setting using proteomic analysis. And we found that many biomarkers that were downregulated in our tape strip study were similar to those that we found previously in skin biopsies, such as CCL17 and CCL13, hallmark TH2 chemokines. So really exciting, again, we do need skin biopsies in early studies, but in later studies, this allows us to sample more patients. And of course, it's easier in children, uh, infants, and other indications. So I think uh, you are sharing my enthusiasm. Uh, we have an exciting path to find more treatment targets for our patients and more treatments. And of course, biomarkers are helping uh, us in doing that. I thank you so much for your attention.